It's Ann Arbor's 1071. Good morning, I'm Scott Vertical, and uh, here with me on the phone is John Stewart. He just happens to be the bassist for Wilco. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us today. It's good to be here, Scott. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and, and thanks for um, getting with us. We, we had a hard time getting with you because you've got some weather issues that you're dealing with. Are, are you surviving okay? Uh, yeah, we've got a we got a hurricane in New England, mm. which is um, you know kind of a rarity, but um, just kind of battening down the hatches. And uh, I'm from uh, New Orleans originally, right. so it's nothing nothing new. Um, but um, <laughs> I, that's why I moved to New England. So right. it's like, no, it's like, but um, so. <laughs> do, do you do the new you, normal? I guess. Welcome to the new weather. So now, John, you have been with Wilco since the beginning. You are uh, one of the two still original members. Is that correct? You and Jeff. That's true. Yep, I'm, I'm the 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 other uh, OG old <laughs> original <laughs> member. So yes, I'm. Uh, that's me. Yeah, you were you were with Jeff and Uncle Tupelo uh, together, and then uh, you that band uh, disintegrated, for lack of a better word, right? Right. right. And that was that was really that was really brief. I think it was it, it ended up being like five or six months. But oh. um, I was like friendly with the band before sure. that and sort of, you know, went went pretty far back with them. But, um, yeah, I was able to um, be a part of that last record uh, called Anodyne, which was a great experience and yeah. a lot of fun. But yeah, um, yeah. but it, it didn't it didn't last much longer after after we after I got in the band. So they didn't break up because of you. Right. I think they did. No, I'm, I'm kidding. No, they did. No, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, um, they, they, um, they had had a long, right. they had had a long, uh, run before that, a long history and, and, you know, and just sort of growing up together and, you know, I think they were both ready to kind of, you know, do their own thing sure. and, uh, you know, and, and they still, both of them are still doing it. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, very cool. It it is very cool that uh, that the music lives on, and 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 you are main, you you play a variety of instruments, uh, but you're mainly a bass player for Wilco, right? Correct. Right. So uh, I know you and you, you plink around on some other things uh, here and there, but when you decided to become a bass player way back when, uh, who were some of your influences? Like, what made you say, "Oh, the bass is the thing for me." I was sort of, um, you know, like growing up in new, around New Orleans in, in the seventies. There was a lot of the FM radio that had, um, that you know, I just remember like Wings and the Meters, uh, and, yeah. you know, and like a lot of there was like this region. There was this kind of regionality with like seventies FM ra- radio, even mm-hmm. then in New Orleans being so rich. I do remember um, uh, listening to George Porter a lot um, from the Meters and um, loving loving that loving funk and also yeah. like loving loving the beatles and loving paul mccartney um later on i like kind of got to got to really appreciate um these different um a lot of memphis bass players really like um this uh tommy cogbill mm. who um was this incredible um bassist producer for the american recording service band okay. um, and uh he has this incredible incredible history that's kind of all this stuff joe osborne and um yeah ironically he's some a lot from louisiana joe osborne who, okay you know simon and garfunkel and played on mamas and papas just a, a incredible session guy um so you kind of kind of learned a little a little bit more about the the session bass players um, um but still loved a lot of Love, like Tina Weymouth is someone oh, that actually yeah. had had like someone that I I always forget to mention that that I I shouldn't because she um, because the talking has you know yeah. they were just talking heads were such a um, she was just um, always such a cool had just such a cool feel and lines right. and, and was just a, a great presence of course so yeah it, um, well you know it's funny because you, you you say that you almost always forget to mention her and, and I feel like that that's almost kind of how she wants it um I got to see the uh the talking heads in IMAX uh you know when when they had the big premiere and they were talking together afterwards and it was a big Q&A afterwards and she said during that interview that she keeps her bass down to like the the, the volume level like at three or four because she doesn't want to get in the way of all the other things happening uh which i thought was fascinating thing because most i feel like most uh um I, correct me if i'm wrong but most band members are like i need to turn mine up louder than yours 
<laughs> right? <laughs> right, so, exactly. But, yeah, that that's definitely like a kind of a basis personality, you know, at work yeah. there. I know she um but um there is a there is a the subtle beauty of the bass like that, the mm-hmm. melodic and the power, you know, that can you know, in that frequency that can kind of be, you know, not it's just not in your face and right and, um but that's very cool I, i've got to see that i've got to see that interview some yes. of the pictures look pretty awkward i have to say <laughs> well <But>, um, <laughs> we we can talk more off the air about it the interview wasn't great but um it was cool to see all four of them together in the same room let's put it that way um that <laughs> you know and you're talking about bass players and you mentioned wings and paul mccartney of course and everybody knows paul mccartney's a musical genius i i don't know that people um, recognize his bass playing because again, it, it's this thing that happens in the background that kind of keeps the it's the glue. You know, the bass and the drums are the glue that keep the rest of the band together, and you don't necessarily want it um, blasting out front. And if you can, if you ever get a chance, I'm sure you've heard uh, Paul's uh, isolated bass parts uh, on some of those Beatles songs. They're just oh, totally fascinating. Oh, yeah. And you know, like, and then you hear the song again with the full band, and you're like, okay, now I hear it, and now I understand what he was doing and why this song is so good. He's so, so good, obviously. And yeah, concentrating on it and, re- and the sound on Revolver, but then going in from Sgt. Pepper's after the fact yeah. and, and, and working, you know, working like all night on the bass parts after the, after the, 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 the after the initial basic takes were done and just to, the counterpoint and the, the sort of feel and the genius of all, of all that. And, yeah. and just to also get that, to get that better sound, um, you know, right. uh, isolated and everything. But yeah, I mean, just what, what can you say? I right. Think, I think that, yeah, I think songs, it's songs with songs within songs, you know, right. So, so, so much, you know, yeah, that's uh, you know, that's a pretty hot take though. Uh, you and I are coming up with here, uh, Paul McCartney's a good bass player. I think that, you yeah. know, I think we're probably going to break the internet and make, you know, <laughs> making that news. I don't know if anybody's ever thought of that before. <laughs> um, Eureka. Yeah. Um, now, now, John, uh, your your new album with uh, Wilco is going to be out uh, at the end of the month, September 29th. It's your 13th studio album. It's Cousin. And uh, it was produced by Welsh musician Kate LeBon. Was that your first time working with, with Kate or meeting Kate? And, wh- and what was that experience like? Um, no, we we had met her um, at Solid Sound in 2000. Uh, that's our our festival that we okay. uh, that we do out in Western Massachusetts um, every other year. Uh, we had met her, and um, I had met her at once on the road as well. So it wasn't the the very first time we met. The first time we worked together, though. Sure. So um, what was it like working with Kate? Though was it. Um you know, how many different producers have you worked with over the years? And, and you know, um, what what made this experience different? Um, well, working with a producer is kind of uh, different for Wilco. And in, in general, we've we generally, you know, always really been self-produced, except okay. for Jim Scott, who, um, who we kind of had this we kind of had this history with um, around Wilco, the album and, mm-hmm. um, and then Jim O'Rourke who, um, who, you know, really came in, he came in to, to remix Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Um, he wasn't really, you know, he wasn't around for the recording of that, okay. but he did shape the shape, the record greatly with his, you know, with his mixing. And, um, but he was for ghost is born. He did, Jim did, did um, produce from the floor, and that was a that was a. I, I always enjoy I I enjoy working with producers because um, it's generally um, like direction is great, and I mm-hmm. think um, like the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, they were just you know we just you know as as you can see from the from the box set, there was so you know we were just having trouble finding consensus on right on where to go mm-hmm. and um, it's always good to it's just good to have someone you trust doing that right. um, Kate was more of a, a building of the building of the track sort okay. of um, kind of artist you know what I mean to we worked separately on all of it okay and um, and that's that's a definite you know way a lot of people work so and we have done that before okay yeah, and, and, and this is your fifth album in like 10 years, and one of them was a double album. So, I mean, how how, how does that happen? I mean, some artists you hear one, and like Peter Gabriel's got one album coming out every 20 years. Um, how do you how do you create that much music in that short a period of time? And it's also quality stuff. 
Oh, well, that's, that's nice. Um, Je- Jeff, well, I mean, it, it comes down to Jeff, you know, just, mm-hmm. um, producing songs and, and just being, um, you know, working, you know, daily, you know, uh, when we're not on the road and I'm sure writing on the road quite a bit, but he's always, he's always been very pro- prolific. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think, um, you know, writing a book about songwriting too, I'm sure mm-hmm. it makes you think more about <laughs> It's like, Hey, I should be writing a song now. Right. <laughs> uh, so, you know, but he's always been prolific and, and that's, that's really where it comes, what it comes down to. Yeah. So he, he just say, Hey, I got another notebook full. Let's hit the studio. Right. Something like that. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I think, you know, everybody, you know, we all like to make things and, yeah. you know, and to, to, you know, create. And, uh, but, um, I think that's, that's the root of it for sure. Right. Uh, do you know if you're planning on touring for this latest release? We are. Well, okay. I'm leaving in a few days and, um, to go out West. We just got back from Europe. We were, um, still supporting cruel country in, in a five week tour of Europe and, um, just lovely. And, uh, and we're headed to the West coast for the, release of of this record and i'm sure we have we still haven't played cruel country really out west okay so it's going to be in a way we'll be kind of debuting like two records in, wow. in a way so um yeah. <laughs> uh so it's yeah. you know yeah, there's never there's never a lack of material and and um you know the back catalog is you know it's deep full. so it's, yeah it's kind of hard <laughs> it's it's now we're at the point where we can't really play a song from every record during a show yeah. that's kind of the yeah. threshold but you know, that's, um, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah. You have to do like a four hour show, which the fans would not complain about. They wouldn't complain about it. Yeah. <laughs> fans do it. You yeah. Know, they do it. They I, do. I, you know. They do. Um, well, John Stewart, thanks for joining us today. Um, the, the new album from Wilco Cousins is coming out on the September 29th. Uh, and, you know, when, when you are touring, uh, stop by Ann Arbor. I love I love that town. It's, yeah. It's, 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 a great, it's a great musical tradition as well. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. And my wife was born there. So. Oh, you're kidding. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> no, great. It, so you know. I, we, we love it. So okay. um, thanks for your time, Scott. Have yeah. a great day. Oh, thanks. You too, John. This is the... Uh, the latest single from the LP Cousins, It's Evicted. Thanks again, John, for joining us on Ann Arbor's 1071. More music in the morning with Scott Vertical on Ann Arbor's 1071.